Today's video is on multiplying fractions and mixed numbers. In the example shown, there's a cup of pink lemonade. Half of the cup is full. And we want to know what one-third of half the cup is. So if you were to drink one-third of half the cup, you didn't drink one-third of the cup. You drank one-third of one-half of the cup. So really, the whole cup would need to be cut into sixths to get a true idea of how much, that's the top of the cup, of how much of the uh, cup was actually, that you actually drank. So one third of one half actually would represent one sixth. Now, to show that mathematically, you could multiply one third times one half because one third of one half does mean to multiply. So one times one is one, three times two is six. And you would get the same answer of one sixth. Now, we don't always use diagrams to show multiplication, but it does help us to have an understanding of what it means to multiply. Most of us are used to the format of multiplying, just fraction times fraction. You do not need a common denominator. Now, just in the example I just did, one-third times one-half, I'd like to show what would happen if you converted these to a common denominator. Unnecessarily, I might add. If you multiply this by two, it changes to two-sixths and you multiply this by 3 to change this to 3 6 and then multiply 2 6 times 3 6 all you're going to do is end up creating more work for yourself changing the answer to 6 over 36 which would then need to be simplified to give you the very same answer we already have so i'd like to point out that it's not necessary to change to a common denominator when multiplying fractions instead you're merely going to multiply your numerator times your numerator to get your new numerator, your denominator times your denominator to get your new denominator, and then check to make sure your answer is in lowest terms. Again, 2 times 4 is 8. 5 times 5 is 25. Since 8 and 25 share no common factors, 8 over 25 would be your answer. 2 times 3 is 6. 7 times 4 is 28. Now in this case, 6 and 28 both share the common factor 2. So by dividing both the numerator and denominator by 2, we get our answer in lowest terms. Now I'm going to show that exact same answer using a method that's sometimes called cross-canceling or sometimes known as cross-reducing. And what this will do is this will give us our answer and we can simplify before we multiply. We do that by canceling out the 2 and the 4 and actually dividing by 2 before we even start. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And then we go ahead and multiply across. 1 times 3 is 3. 7 times 2 is 14. As we discussed in class, simplifying before you multiply keeps the numbers smaller and easier to work with. It's not required by any means, but it certainly will keep your work going smoother when you have large numbers as factors. In a case of a fraction times a whole number, you're merely going to rewrite the problem so the whole number is over 1. And then you can multiply just like before. 2 times 3 is 6. 5 times 1 is 5. You'll note in this example, our numerator is greater than our denominator, or an improper fraction. So we're going to divide our numerator by our denominator to find out that we have 1 with a remainder 1, or 1, and one-fifth as our answer. We cannot leave answers improper. Here's an example of a mixed number times a whole number. In the case of a mixed number times a whole number, or in any mixed number situation, you can't multiply the mixed numbers. You have to convert them first to improper fractions. 3 times 3 is 9, plus 1 is 10 over 3, and then again 4 over 1. 10 times 4 is 40, 3 times 1 is 3, and again, we'll divide 40 divided by 3. 3 goes into 4 one time with a remainder. 3 goes into 10 three times with a remainder of 1. And so my answer is 13 and 1 third. In this final example, we have a mixed number times a mixed number. In this case, both numbers must be changed to improper fractions. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5 over 2. 5 times 3 is 15, plus 2 is 17 over 5. 
Now it's really important to note how handy it is to be able to do that simplifying before we multiply. It would be really silly to multiply 5 times 17 to get a large answer that you would just need to simplify by 5. So let's cross cancel. Change those both to 1. So we're dividing that by 5 to get 1. Dividing that by 5 to get 1. We bring this over. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 goes into 17 8 times with 1 remaining. So our answer is 8 and 1 half. Again, when you multiply fractions and mixed numbers, you are going to multiply your numerator times your denu numerator, your denominator times your denominator, and in the case of a mixed number, you're going to want to convert them to improper fractions first. Good luck on your homework.